Hey guys, uh, Mr. C here. Today we're going to be talking about acids and bases and how they interact in a process, a chemical reaction called neutralization. All right, so uh, the first thing that we need to kind of get going here is that uh, we have two ions in play here. We have one called hydrogen and acids produce something called hydrogen ions. So hydrogen ions essentially um, are just a hydrogen atom that's lost its electron and that's why it's positive since electrons are negative. Okay, so we also have hydroxide ions and hydroxide uh, I'll just draw out for you uh, real quick here. Uh, so we have an oxygen atom and that will tend to lose um, or I'm sorry gain two electrons so it becomes minus two but a hydrogen is plus one so what happens is one of these negatives gets canceled by that positive and we end up with OH minus okay so um, that would be the the first part so we have those two ions hydrogen and hydroxide so in every reaction you have reagents and you have products reagents are the things that react and products are what they produce or what they make in, the, in a neutralization reaction there are two reagents okay and they're an acid and a base so these guys right here all right these are our reagents and this is our product and our product is going to get a little more specific than this but our product is going to be neutral so since we're neutralizing we take an acid and we add a base and we make neutral all right so um, that's that's the first part let's see and the next thing that we're going to do is take a look at a specific reaction so the first thing is if we substitute for the word acid the ion it produces which in this case is H plus and then we substitute the ion that a base produces whoops um, the uh, hydroxide then acid plus base equals water now if you notice that these are opposite ions so if we have um, a hydrogen ion right here which is positive and a hydroxide ion which is negative then those two will attract each other and they'll cancel each other out and we'll end up with one hydrogen two hydrogens and one oxygen so H 2 O and you can see that basically they're just rearranging after they combine and then we write it this way all right so uh, an acid plus base is going to give us water but that's not entirely the whole truth the whole truth of the matter is that when they do that there's a scale to consider and there's some other ions to consider so let's look at that the pH scale all right is known as a scale that goes from 0 to 14 acids on the left that's why they're red bases on the right up at 14 that's why it's blue seven in the middle with this sort of green color that's neutral so if we start off with an acid and we begin adding a little bit of base to it it'll start getting weaker it'll start getting neutralized or come to the middle where neutral is if we start with a base and we start adding an acid it will neutralize and get weaker as it approaches neutral so there are a lot of bases along this scale above 7 and some of them are weaker if they're closer to 7 or stronger if they're closer to 14. Acids, same deal. The further they get away from 7, the stronger they get. The closer they get to 7, the weaker they get. So weak acid doesn't produce a lot of those hydrogen ions and a weak base doesn't produce a lot of hydroxide. A strong base produces a lot, a strong acid produces a lot of hydrogen. So the pH scale, all right, sometimes we, we might write it, um, you'll see it written this way, P, and the H is capitalized. Well, that stands for the potential, whoops, of hydrogen ions. Okay, so the, the greater the potential, the closer to zero. I know that's a little counterintuitive, but that's just the way it is. So let's look at a couple uh, specific ions here. Let's pull up a blank sheet. Now let's see, check out my drawing skills here. So the first thing that I want to do is take a common acid HCl, hydrochloric acid, and we're going to add to that a common base, which is sodium hydroxide. Okay, now you can actually see the acid and the base right there. And what's going to happen is those are going to combine just like before and they're going to make water. 
But what, what's left behind is this Na and Cl. So I'll, I'll show you what happens. First of all, they are actually going to combine as well, and that's going to form sodium chloride or table salt. But what's really going on is these things do something called ionize or disassociate, dissociate. So that means that they do this, H plus and Cl minus. They turn into their own ions. And then we get sodium plus and hydroxide minus. So we can see if opposites are going to attract, then the only option is to switch places. So we end up with H and OH, and they form our water. Okay. So this guy, we'll just call it acid and base. They're going to go form water. And we're left with these guys, sodium and chlorine. And since they're opposites and they're ions, they're going to attract to make salt. Now, salt, in this case, this is table salt. But if I were to switch up the acid and use hydrofluoric, for example, or potassium hydroxide, I wouldn't get sodium chloride. I'd get something else. And so um, a salt is an ionic compound, remember, formed by ions, that happens when we neutralize an acid and a base. So the acid and the base, the H and the OH, are going to make water. That's neutral. But we have leftover ions, sodium and chlorine, which go to form a salt. So in every neutralization reaction, you have two products. You have water, which is neutral, and you have a salt. All right, well, I hope that was helpful, and uh, we'll catch you. Wow, awesome. Lights are off, which means it's time to go.